Welcome to the School of Wisdom, a weekly podcast produced for the Bible Bistro, studying the book of Proverbs chapter by chapter. My son, hear the instruction of your father. Forsake not the law of your mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace to your head and chains about your neck. Now, this week's lesson. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to the School of Wisdom podcast here in the Bible Bistro. Today, chapter 9 of the book of Proverbs. So if you have your Bible, why don't you open it up there to chapter 9. Get a comfortable seat here in the Bible Bistro. Open your Bible up. Get something cold or hot to drink, whatever your choice is. We're going to look today at chapter 9. And just to let everybody know, this one's probably going to be a little bit shorter than usual. We only have 18 verses in this chapter, and there's no My Son lesson here. We have this dramatic comparison between two women, and then we have uh, interesting instruction about reproving and rebuking right here in the middle. We'll talk about all that here in just a minute. Let me remind you about the other podcasts that are in the Bible Bistro. We have Daily Dose Radio, which is an everyday study of the Psalms verse by verse. Five minutes a day, five days a week. We also have the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit, which features sermons preached at Creek Road Baptist Church. Today, in the School of Wisdom, we're studying Proverbs chapter 9, and I'll ask you to follow me as I read, and I'm going to read down through verse 6. Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live. Go in the way of understanding. Now I'm going to do a little bit different today, because I want to take out verses 1 through 6 and compare that with verses 13 through 18. Because in those two sections, 1 through 6 and 13 through 18, we have the two ladies compared. One, what I just read was Lady Wisdom. The other, beginning in verse 13, is the Lady Foolish. So the Lady Foolish and the Lady Wisdom are compared and contrasted here in this chapter you'll notice that there are lots of similarities between the two. Number one, they both have a house. Notice there in verse one, wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. Down there in verse 14, the lady foolish says that she sits at the door of her house. So she has a house too, but she's not builded it. And it's not uh, hewn out seven pillars. We Those seven pillars suggest something complete and perfect. Uh, you know, those pillars could be things like wisdom, understanding, knowledge, discretion, learning, uh, the commandments, those kind of things. So the seven pillars that hold up that house, this is a firm house. It's been built in a complete way. And so here we have her building her house. She's hewn out her pillars And now we have her producing a feast, a banquet for us. Notice verse 2. She hath killed her beast, mingled her wine, furnished her table, sent forth her maidens. So a banquet has been prepared. And what's she going to do? She's going to call people to come to the banquet. This, I don't know about you, this reminds me of um, Matthew chapter 22 when the Lord Jesus told the story about the king who gave a marriage feast for his son. And he invited lots of people to come, but they never did come. And so he sent out messengers again, inviting them to come, that everything was prepared. And they abused the messengers and killed some of them and despitefully used other ones. And so the king sent out his armies and destroyed those. And and actually, Jesus says there in 22, he destroyed those miserable sinners, or those miserable murderers. That's the language that's used there. And then he told his servants, go get everybody, bad and good, bring them all in. Well, that's the idea here. This banquet has been prepared. 
And it's very detailed. The beast, the wine, the table, the maidens. The maidens have gone out and they're inviting. And they're also doing the job inside the venue, wherever that might be, inside those seven pillars, getting all the tables set up, imagining all the linens that are on the tables and the food and where it's going to be and the guests and where they're going to sit and all the silverware and all the chinaware and, you know, all of the the beauty, the floral arrangements, everything that goes into a lovely banquet. And then we have verse 3, the second half, she crieth. Who's that? That's Lady Wisdom. She's crying out upon the highest places of the city. So she has this banquet prepared. She has her house built. It has She's hewn out seven pillars. So these just aren't wooden pillars. These are stone pillars. These are lasting. This house is made to stay. And she's crying now. She's crying in the highest places of the city. And then you'll notice verse 4. And I want you to look at verse 4 and then look at verse 16 because you'll find that they are identical. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. Okay, same thing that we have down here in verse 16. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, But now this is the lady foolish. Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. So she has guests too. Lady Wisdom has guests, and they've come to learn wisdom, to get understanding, to go in the way of understanding. The foolish woman, Lady Foolish, she has guests, but they're dead. They're in the depths of hell. And she's inviting people to come into her parlor, if you will. Spider said to the fly, "Come, come into my parlor. So she's wanting to entrap them because the person who is enticed by the foolish woman doesn't know that the dead are there. So we have the same same thing being said by both Lady Wisdom and Lady Foolish. What does that tell us? That tells us that in this life we have a choice to make. We can either follow the way of understanding and follow wisdom, that is, walking in the way of the Lord, or we can follow temptation, the easy route, the quick route, and leave understanding, even though she says, if you're lacking understanding, here's what I have to say. Stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. You see, she says very much the same thing that Lady Wisdom said there in verse 5. Lady Wisdom in 5 says, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I've mingled. Here it's bread and water. Stolen waters are sweet, and the bread eaten in secret is pleasant. So it's not bread and wine, it's water and bread. And you'll notice that the foolish woman says, Stolen water is sweet. Stolen water is sweet. And bread eaten in secret is pleasant. And is that true? Yes, it's true. Because... In the moment, pleasure always satisfies, but later on leaves a bad taste in the mouth. And so when we steal, and of course we know we're not supposed to steal, but this lady's enticing us to steal. So this woman represents for us temptation. When something is done in secret, that is in the shadows, that we know that things are to be done in the open to glorify God. These are not being done in the open to glorify God. This is being done in secret to satisfy my pleasure, whatever that might be. And I like it because it is pleasant. Lady Wisdom says, come and eat my bread, forsake the foolish and live. Lady Foolish says, stolen water is sweet, bread eaten in secret is pleasant. You don't know this, but the dead are there. Now, notice the contrast. Lady Wisdom says, forsake the foolish and live. Lady Foolish says he doesn't know that the dead are there. So death is in one place, life is in the other. Life is with wisdom, death is with Lady Foolish. 
Not only that, her guests are in the depths of hell. So she's invited other people into this parlor and apparently hasn't turned out too well for them. Well, we come now to, oh, I forgot to mention, notice verse 13. A foolish woman is, and then we have this definition of her, clamorous, simple, and knows nothing. This is the perfect contra-definition of wisdom. If we were going to try to put to, you know, in just a few words what wisdom is not, this would be it. Wisdom is not clamorous, simple, and knows nothing. Of course, we already know that. And so when we read this, we say, oh, well, this is the exact opposite. This woman is the exact opposite from Lady Wisdom. Lady Wisdom builds her house. The foolish w- woman, well, she's not. She's clamorous, simple, and knows nothing. She can't build a house. She sits at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city. So while Lady Wisdom seems to be standing because she's crying out, look at that in verse 3. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. So she is crying out. The foolish woman is sitting. And she's calling. She's, you know, whispering to them. Hey, come, come over here. Hey, I got something for you. Come over here. So she's calling to the passengers who go right on their way. She's seated in the high places of the city, seated by the door of her house. She's calling to passengers. She's not crying out. That's what wisdom is doing. No, this one is calling. So there's a difference here between the two. But verse 16, we hear the same thing. They both offer those who lack understanding something. Wisdom says, come eat of my bread, drink of the wine which I have mingled, forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. But Lady Foolish says, stolen waters are sweet, bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But the man who turns in there doesn't know that the dead are there and that that her guests are in the depths of hell. So she's been doing this for a long time. This woman represents for us temptation. Always it stands there or sits there and calls out. And it's constant. It never gives up. So a banquet on one hand, bread and water on the other hand, you can choose. Life on one hand, death on the other hand, you can choose. Notice verses 7 through 12 now. Right here in the middle of the chapter, couched between Lady Wisdom and Lady Foolish, we have this reproving and rebuking idea. And we have two different groups that are mentioned. Notice verse 7. He that reproveth the scorner getteth to himself shame. He that rebuketh the wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. So we have scorner, wicked scorner. Repu- reprove, rebuke, reprove. Okay, now look at the second half of 8 and all of 9. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man and he will yet be wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. So here we have wise man, wise man, just man. And what are we doing? We're rebuking, giving, giving instruction to and teaching. Notice also the way in which they respond to these things. So the scorner, the wicked man... Uh, he, the person who tries to reprove the scorner, gets shame, gets a blot. And to reprove a scorner, you get hate. Well, if you rebuke a, a wise man, you're going to get love. A wise man is going to be yet wiser if you give him instruction. And a just man, well, he's going to increase in learning. So you see that the outcomes are even different. The beginning is the same. We're repro- reproving, rebuking in the scorner of the wicked in the scorner, and we're rebuking, giving instruction and teaching, which is similar to what we had over there in the other one, but we're reproving and rebuking because the scorner and the wicked man are doing wrong. The wise man, well, you can rebuke a wise man and he'll correct him, and because he's wise, he understands what just happened and he loves you for it because he doesn't want to go in the way of the scorner. He doesn't want to go in the way of the wicked man. He doesn't want any part of that. So he loves you. He's going to be yet wiser because you instructed him. So you teach a just man, he's going to increase in learning. Why? Because of wisdom. Again, wisdom is the principal thing. 
So those two comparisons there. And we're going to see them come back in to uh, the end of this section here in just a minute. Then you'll notice verse 10. I think verse 10 is probably the money verse in this entire chapter. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So the knowledge of the holy, that's the thing that's different here. We've had the fear of the Lord before. We've had this statement, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom before. But now we add to it the knowledge of the holy. We pull away all pretense now. The mask comes off. This is about walking in holiness. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. So if we're going to fear the Lord, and if that's going to be the beginning of wisdom, then where's that going to lead us? What's the path look like? We're standing at the head of the path because we fear the Lord, but what's the path look like? Well, it's the knowledge of holy. And if we're walking in the knowledge of holiness, then we will have understanding. And remember, that's you know part of our first two conditions in Proverbs, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. And these are, of course, this is in the language of Lady Wisdom. She's saying this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy is understanding. Then we have verse 11, wisdom speaks out loud here, for by me. She says, the days, thy days shall be multiplied. You want long life? Follow wisdom. And the years of thy life shall be increased. So we have this lovely Hebrew parallelism here. Verse 12, if thou will be wise, thou shall be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. So again, we have the wise and the scorner. Those two that we had in 7, 8, and 9. If you be wise, you'll bear the wisdom for yourself. That is, it'll redound back to you. Though the same is true for the scorner. If you're a scorner, you're going to bear that as well. So there's a reward for the wise man, and there's a reward for the scorner. And wisdom says, don't be foolish. Forsake the foolish and live. Go in the way of understanding. And what is the way of understanding? Well, she tells us in verse 10. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. So if I'm going to forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding, then ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be following after the commands and the laws and the precepts that the Lord God gives me. For if I do that, my days will be multiplied, life shall be increased, I will live. I will not go down to the depths of hell. Death will happen, yes, to this body. But there's something more wonderful that's going to happen to the soul. All right, well, that's about it for today. I hope you'll join me again next time. And we will look at Psalms. I'm in Daily Dose Radio mode. We will look at Proverbs chapter 10 in the School of Wisdom. Hey, thanks for listening to the School of Wisdom podcast. If you're listening to this over YouTube, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time one of these podcasts is uploaded. I really appreciate all my followers, and I try to respond to each and every one of your questions. Come again next week, and we'll enjoy another lesson in the School of Wisdom.